One of the examples of using derivatives to talk about rates of change is projectile motion. Um, you throw something up into the air, it comes back down again, right? So what I have here is a, a graph and a function, and, and you may have seen these in an algebra class. Um, what I'm doing is I'm starting with something at, at a particular height here. Actually, if you plug in t equals zero, the height is 80. So that's the starting height. The thing is actually just moving straight up and then coming straight back down again. It's not really moving from side to side. But when I draw the graph, I'm drawing its height function as a function of time. Okay, so this is just telling you how high off the ground it is after so many seconds. And, and t is here, it's gonna be measured in seconds. So t is in seconds and y is measured in feet. Okay, now where this formula came from, uh, I, I made it up. All right, this is its height function. Actually, what I'm it's designed to, to, to fairly accurately model, model um, projectile motion if there's no air resistance. So, of course, there always is air resistance, but you know, if we neglect it, things look like a parabola. Um, so starting at a height of 80, it's going upwards. At some point, it stops going upwards, and then it comes back down again. Right? In an algebra class, you might have been asked a couple of different things. You might have been asked, you know, when does it hit the ground? Right? You think about how would you, how would you answer that question? Well, the ground is when the y coordinate is zero. So you're saying zero equals negative sixteen t squared plus sixty four sixty four t plus eighty. Right, and there I've got a quadratic equation. I've got to solve for t. Um, Actually, there would be two solutions, this one right here, and if I extend that backwards, there would be this probably negative value of time there. Um, and how do you solve a quadratic equation? Right? This is an algebra thing. You either factored or used the quadratic formula or complete the square, all sorts of different things. Uh, this one actually, if you happen to notice that there's a factor of 16, actually negative 16, that I'll take out of here, t squared minus 4t minus 5 um, and then you can factor this thing t minus 5 and t plus 1 so you've got you know whoops why is that squared t minus 5 and t plus 1 are the factors so either the 16 is equal to 0 which it isn't or the t minus 5 is equal to 0 or the t plus 1 is equal to 0 so this tells you that t equals 5 or t equals negative one. Sure enough, there was that negative one back here, and the five is right there. So this is something that you would have done in an algebra class. Now they also might have done. Uh, they might have said, "Hey, where's the where's the highest point, and how high is you know how high does it go?" So at that point, you're saying, "Where's the vertex?" And remember, what you had to do was you had to take this equation and put it in vertex form. You had to complete the square and rewrite it. Well, actually, with calculus, we've got an a um, better way of doing that now. Better, a different way of doing that. Um, in particular, the highest point is the only point on that graph where the tangent line is horizontal. And if the tangent line is horizontal, then um, the slope of the, you know, the, the derivative is zero at that point. So to find the highest point is the same thing of saying when is the derivative equal to zero. So if I look at dy dt here, the derivative of this function with respect to the variable t, this is um, negative 32t plus 64. To find the vertex, um, I set that derivative equal to zero because it's the only place on the uh, on the parabola where there's a horizontal tangent line. So to find the vertex is the same as saying find the spot where the derivative is equal to zero. Um, well, this is not too hard to solve. Um, uh, t is equal to 64 divided by 32, which is 2. So at time 2 here, 2 seconds, that's when I'm at the highest point. If I wanted to know the height at that highest point, I'd plug that 2 back into here and figure out what it is. Okay. So this is a, a question that you probably were asked back in an algebra class, but we have a much quicker way of getting to it now that we have the notion of derivatives. Okay. More so, 
there are questions now that I can ask that I never was able to ask before. I could ask something like, how fast is the object moving when it hits the ground? Now, we know what time it hits the ground. We calculated that right here, time 5. I want to know how fast it's moving. Okay. Well, we have a position function. The position function is this. The rate of change in the position function, that is, how fast the position is changing with respect to time, is the derivative function. This is the velocity. Right. So I have position is this. Position is negative 16 t squared plus 64 t plus 180. 180? No, it wasn't. What was it? It was just 80, wasn't it? 80. The velocity function is the rate at which the position is changing. That's the derivative. So it's minus 32 t plus 64. Right? At t equals 5, the velocity, when you plug a 5 in, is negative 32 times 5 plus 64, whatever that is. Um, 96, negative 96 maybe. Um, yeah, negative 96, and this is feet per second, right? Notice the negative is an indication of heading downhill. I was measuring up in the po you know, positive in the up direction here so to say that this is a negative slope well sure enough you're headed downhill slope of the tangent line is negative here the slope of that tangent line is negative 96 um, but from the point of view of rate of change that's 96 feet per every second every time you move over one second according to the slope at that moment move over one second, you're going to go down 96 feet. Okay. Notice that with velocity, uh, the, I'm going to make a distinction between velocity and speed. Speed I think of as being always positive. If I want to know what's the speed when it hits the ground, um, it's going 96 feet per second. Right? The velocity with the minus sign in front of it is an indication of direction. Um, as I look at this graph, over here, the slopes are positive, and the, the object is going up. Right? So positive velocity means the, the y is changing in a positive sense. It's getting bigger. Um, over here, with these slopes being negative, um, you can still think of the speed. You know, The speed here might be the same as the speed over there, but this is uphill and that's downhill. The velocity takes that into account. To say that the velocity is negative is telling you that the y value is decreasing as time increases. Right? The rate of change is negative. You're losing height. Right? So there's um, the notion of velocity. Um, another thing that um, is often asked, there's, there's two other concepts here that I want. Uh, one is uh, the notion of net displacement and total distance traveled. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video right now because I'm not going to have enough time before my 15 minutes are up. Um, and so I will just uh, continue this in uh, another video.